Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best controllers that's been released in a long time. This has actually been my go-to controller for the last month and a half or so. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably seen this in a bunch of my videos. This has been my go-to controller when it comes to Android gaming, Switch gaming, PC gaming. I've even used this with the Steam Deck and some of my Linux builds that I've been doing recently. This is known as the Gillikit King Kong 2, and what really makes this special are the analog sticks and the triggers. They're actually using Hall sensors here, and this is nothing new, but it's been implemented in a really good way. If you're not familiar with Hall sensor technology, this has been around for a very long time, and in fact, it's been used in controllers in the past. The original Dreamcast controller's analog stick used a Hall sensor, and basically, instead of using physical connections, it's using a magnetic field. So in theory, we should have more precise controls, and we never have to worry about joystick drift with a controller like this. It does come with this handy little travel case, keeps it from getting scratched up when you want to throw it in your book bag, and it does have a built-in battery. They claim that this will last up to 25 hours on a single charge, and that's continuous use, and yeah, I can definitely see that happening. Now, aside from the analog sticks using hall sensors, the triggers are also, so with racing games, this will come in really handy. You have more precise control over your gas and brake if you use those buttons for your gas and brake. Now, it does really seem like this was designed for the Switch, but it also works with PC, Mac, Android, Linux. We have different settings for D input, X input. We've got a dedicated Switch input and a dedicated Android input. Personally, I love the design and the look of the controller. We've got that black against the silver. I think it looks really sleek. Now, up top, we've got our shoulder buttons. We've got our trigger buttons. We've also got USB-C for charging the battery, or you could use this as a wired controller. We've also got our Bluetooth sync button, our mode button, and our LED indicators to tell us exactly what's going on with the controller. But yeah, overall, this has been my go-to controller for the last month and a half, and I've been really enjoying using it. This is something I can put in that travel case, throw it in my bag, and basically take it anywhere I need to because it works with a ton of different devices, and syncing it up with everything is really easy also. And the first thing I want to take a look at is just some switch functionality. A lot of people are looking for a good pro controller alternative, and I think this would be perfect. So I've got the OLED switch right here, switch console wake up. So if you do have this in your dock connected to your TV and everything went to sleep, all you got to do is press the button, it'll wake the switch up, and you can start playing right from there. And to get this paired up with the switch, what we're going to do here is make sure it's in switch mode. So we're going to hold the mode button. We'll get that LED indicator right in switch mode. Now we're going to hold the Bluetooth pairing button. Those four LEDs will start to cascade. From the switch, we're going to tap on our controller icon, change grip order, and we're in pairing mode. So all we need to do is press L and R at the same time. It's automatically going to detect it and we're connected. We've even got a battery indicator on the switch itself. One more time here, L and R. Switch is going to pick it up. We'll get a vibration on the controller. And now we can start using it with our Switch. I mean, any game that supports a controller, which is every game for the Switch, will work with this controller. So overall, been having a really good time with this controller. Very accurate, and I love this D-pad. This is uh, one of the biggest things that I really like about this controller, other than those hall sensors and the analog sticks. But that's one thing I wanted to show off real quick. So we're going to actually move over to my Android device. And I wanted to give you a little demo of this D-pad working with a fighting game. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm on the Samsung Galaxy SA Ultra running ReDream, Dreamcast emulator. And I'm able to pull off all of these special moves with the D-pad. And obviously, if you don't want to use the D-pad, you can always use the analog stick. But with all of the emulators that I've tested so far in Android, this has been mapped properly. And that's because we can set this up for X input mode. And that's usually what I do when I connect it to my Android device. It basically detects it as an Xbox controller. But if for some reason you do run into an emulator that's not mapped properly, you can always map it through that emulator settings. You shouldn't run into any issues using this controller with an Android device. But I gotta say, one of the main things I've been using this controller for is PC gaming. Here we have Forza Horizon 5. I'll give you a look at those analog triggers. Very accurate here. You can control that gas and brake super easily. Got a lot of throw on here, and it does come in really handy for racing games, and that's one of my favorite genres. I've been playing Forza Horizon 5 basically every day since it released, and this is my go-to controller when I'm playing it on PC. And again, I pair this up to my PC using X input mode, and everything that supports a controller, it just works with because it's detecting it as an Xbox controller. 
really great compatibility here. I did mention that this has a gyro built in. It's not as good as some of the traditional gyros that I've seen, and personally I'm just not a big fan of them in the first place. But this is more of an aim assist gyro, and there's a few different levels here. So we're on level 1 right now. If I press the button and my L2, it'll go up to level 2 and 3, and right now we're in level 3. But as you can see, I do have to hold my left trigger, that's kind of my hotkey, to get this gyro working. And they're calling this aim assist gyro. I mean, it would definitely work out in a shooting game, and it doesn't work like a lot of the traditional six-axis gyros that I've seen in some of the controllers on the market right now. I could see that there would be a few use case scenarios where this would come in handy for some people, but one cool feature that this also has built in is turbo functionality. So right now, I'm not in turbo mode. I've just got Master Chief here jumping. But if I hold that middle button and press any of my action buttons, A, B, X, Y, it'll turn that into a turbo button. And we've got three different modes here. Actually, three different fire rates, basically. But yeah, this is just something else that's got built in. And if you're into those turbo buttons, this works out really well. The and the final thing I wanted to show you here were the analog dead zones. So first up, I wanted to test out an Xbox One control. I will admit that I've had this one for a while. It's been through the ringer. I mean, I've used it quite a bit. But when we try to center these analog sticks, you can see that they're still a bit off. That axis is still reading a little bit. And personally, I haven't run into much issue with these controllers, but as you can see from the graph here, it is a little off when it's supposed to be centered. But as soon as I move over to the King Kong Pro 2, you can see that it's sitting at 0 0.00002. And as soon as I let off, it goes right back to that same exact spot. That dead zone is not off at all, and these analog sticks are very, very accurate. I mean, no matter how much I move these around, let them go real quick, kind of snap back into place, it'll always go back to that correct dead zone spot. And even if the kids are messing around with this controller here, you know, slamming these analog sticks around, it'll go right back to that spot. So yeah, that's really where those hall sensors come in very, very handy. So overall, been loving the King Kong Pro 2 from Gillikit. You know, it was originally designed to be a Switch controller, but since we've got X input, our Android input, and even the older D input, it can be used basically with anything that supports a wired or a Bluetooth controller. And like I mentioned, I've been using this quite a bit with PC and Android gaming, and this is definitely a controller I can recommend. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a link to their website. You can also pick these up on Amazon. Most of the time, you will find a coupon on Amazon for about $10 off, bringing it down to around $49.99. And in some cases, I've actually seen this as low as $39.99 on a big sale, but I really do think it's worth $50 bucks to pick up a controller with this much built into it. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.